Did you know that OpenAI has humanoid robots now? That's on top of Sorrel Neural Network, the one that makes incredibly realistic videos from text prompts. And have you heard about the most affordable home robot helper? How about eating? Yes, you heard me. Eating moving robots in Japan. Where else? We got this and more. I'm Nick. Let's get to it. But first, previously, we announced a raffle with a grand prize of $50 in the form of a gift card, and we've got a winner. Watch this video to the end to find out if it was you. And stick around for more videos to participate in our next giveaway. All right, now, let's get it. 1X, funded by OpenAI, released an unexpected video recently. It shows 17 EVE robots performing various tasks that we usually expect from universal humanoid robots in the first phase of implementation. Nick, so what's all the fuss about? Well, according to the developers, the video does not feature teleoperation, that is human control of the robots. It also has no computer graphics, editing, or motion acceleration. In other words, the robots are acting completely autonomously, that is to say, controlled by neural networks. Experts suggest that the company most likely use simulated learning showing the robot what to do and how to do it through video or direct control, i.e. teleoperation. They then use these behaviors to train a quote-unquote base model capable of performing a wide range of actions, and then further refine the base model to fit the capabilities of a particular environment, such as a warehouse. 1X developers, in turn, claim that in the future, once the robot is delivered to customers, it will only take a few minutes of data collection and training for the machine to begin performing its tasks in its new workplace. Ideally, it will look like this. An operator in a VR helmet performs a job for a few minutes, and then deep learning software will combine that task with the bot's key abilities and run it several thousand times through simulations to test various random factors and outcomes. And that's it. The robot will be ready to go. Reminds me of Bebot from Ron's Gone Wrong. What do you guys think? As for the robot's capabilities, Eve should have an advanced brother called Neo in the near future that will have two legs and real humanoid arms. The company says it's already full of bipedal robots with five toes, but that's not really the important part, is it? It's how to get the robot to quickly learn any new action. And when this problem is solved, adding a couple of limbs is going to be a mere formality. Now, if you haven't heard of 1X before, not to worry, many haven't. What's interesting about it, among other things, is that it raised $25 million from OpenAI. But the PR generated from this round of investment brought 1X another $100 million from other investors all around the world. Like Barbara Streisand effect, but the other way around. Should we call it the 1X effect now? Moving on, Hello Robot has released the third version of its Stretch Mobile Robot. The robot has a rotating 3D camera on top of a mask designed for perception functions and naturally to observe the environment around it. The grip itself, which has always been very simple but functional, has also been updated. Dex Wrist 3 now promises a more secure grip as well as visual control of the gripper's fingers made possible by the built-in 3D camera, while the gripper can be quickly changed to a specialized end effector. Stretch is intended for research and the company hopes to build a large community of developers with it who will all work together to make the robot a versatile household helper. Hello Robot plans to open an online app store for Stretch where the developer community can share new skills that users can download and install on the robot. Each user could then customize the robot with desired capabilities for their unique needs. One of Stretch's clear advantages is its price. Four large ones is much lower than $20,000 for a Tesla bot, which frankly is most likely unattainable in reality. Moving on, an unusual experiment was conducted in Japan. Duh, like, where else? Researchers were inspired by a trend in Japanese cooking such as odorigui. Translated as dancing eating, odorigui is when people eat seafood that's still moving. I don't know about you, but I like my food still. 
But what does this have anything to do with robots? Well, scientists decided to test whether the movement of food affects the flavor. To do this, they created a robot, Harry, H-E-R-I, consisting of a jelly-like mass that has air chambers controlled by pneumatics inside. Osaka University students were then asked to eat these robots in one group. The bots did not move, while in the other group, they moved in their mouths. As a result, researchers revealed several interesting things at once. Firstly, the moving actually made taste sensations brighter. And secondly, those students who ate the moving robot felt a sense of guilt. That is, they treated it already as a living creature. Whereas those who ate the stationary jello did not experience such emotions. What do you guys think about this weird gem? Let us know in the comments below. OpenAI has unveiled its new development, the Sora Neural Network, which is capable of creating high-quality videos based on text prompts. So far, it's being tested by a small group of lucky users, but the company promises to open access to everyone real soon. We're very much looking forward to it. True, Sora has limitations so far. Thus, the model does not always understand the physics of what is happening and has problems with cause and effect, but it works not only with text and can also animate pictures or supplement existing videos. Some examples of Sora's work are already amazing. For example, how accurately Sora mirrored the curve of a smartphone camera in this video and created reflections in the glass that became clearer as the lighting dimmed. But this news also has a certain tinge of disappointment. People thought they were going to create robots for hard labor and then get creative themselves. But in fact, neural networks are doing all the creative work while I have to go shovel the snow on my own. And what about ChatGPT? Well, obviously OpenAI is not going to leave it hanging. It now has graced it with long-term memory, but so far it's in beta testing for a limited number of users. The improvement is intended to save users from endless repetitions of context within a single dialogue. And in this case, if you want the neural network to forget some of your requests, it's enough to ask it and it will not recall them to you again. If we talk mechanics of it all, then large language models use two types of memory. Built-in memory, which is the data on which the model is trained, and context memory, which includes the history of the dialogue in the context window and is limited by the number of tokens. Now, ChatGPT developers are experimenting with memory beyond the context window. You can expand the memory in various ways, such as making a summary of the previous dialogue and remembering only it, or using links to external storage or periodic automatic reminders. OpenAI hasn't disclosed which option it's using. Memory in ChatGPT will work in one of two ways, though. You can ask the chatbot to remember something specific about you. For example, you only write Python code. Or ChatGPT can simply try to collect this data over time, storing information about the user as they ask questions and get answers. That said, storing personal information is a concern for users because ChatGPT has had leaks before. Therefore, developers firstly are trying to train the neural network not to memorize personal data and secondly to introduce the function of memory management so that you can choose what the AI will remember and what it won't. The International Federation of Robotics presented the top five global trends in robotics for this year. The IFR also noted that the number of active robots worldwide has reached a new record of 3.9 million units. In terms of trends, the first one is the increasing use of artificial intelligence in robotics and automation. In particular, robot manufacturers have started to develop generative interfaces based on artificial intelligence that allow users to program systems more intuitively using natural language instead of actual code. Experts predict that soon workers will no longer need specialized programming skills to select and adjust robot actions. Another example is the use of predictive AI to analyze robot performance data and even forecast robot maintenance. The second trend is cobots. Rapid advances in sensors, machine vision technology, and intelligent grippers allow robots to respond to changes in the environment in real time and thus work safely alongside humans. Cobots can help with tasks that require heavy lifting, repetitive movements, or working in hazardous environments. Also, cobots have recently been closing the staffing hunger of businesses by taking up welding positions.
Trend number three is mobile robot manipulators for logistics, automotive, and airspace industries. In essence, they're the same as cobots, but on wheels. Such robots can assist in loading and unloading operations, automate maintenance of other robots and machines, and perform other tasks. The fourth trend is digital twins for optimized productivity in manufacturing. Because the twin exists solely as a computer model, it can be stress tested and modified without any safety implications, all the while saving money. The IFR concluded the list with their fifth trend being humanoid robots. We've covered how they're doing many times before. Check out one of the more recent ones in the description below. We somehow missed it, but PAL Robotics has updated their robot assistant, Tiago. The new Tiago Pro version has more dexterity and accurate series elastic actuator arms, which are also quite long, and it also has an expressive face for human interaction. The robot is designed to assist medical personnel and is also now equipped with safety brakes in all joints. Walt Disney Imagineering demonstrated two robots working together. Duke Weaselton, a character from Zootopia, and a robot kiosk came together. This is quite interesting as we actually rarely see this kind of interaction outside of industrial sites where everything the robots do is highly regulated. In other scenarios, robots are usually on their own or paired with a human who can adjust to changing conditions. Disney engineers relied on the lightness and strength of the robots and taught them to adapt when there were inaccuracies in each other's movements. A character can lean on a motorized kiosk to create the illusion of pushing it around the stage. The kiosk then uses a winch to lift the character onto a platform where electromagnets help stabilize its legs. The result is a freely moving bipedal robot that moves naturally and doesn't require particularly complex controls of precision construction. It can hop around the kiosk while it ensures the robot gets to the right place without a hitch. Clearly, the system was designed in such a way that the movements of both robots were always coordinated. And while the world seems to be going crazy for humanoid robots, Unitree B2 continues to develop its superpowers. And I gotta say, I haven't seen anything like this yet. Look at that ease of movement. What do you guys think? SpaceX has prepared a new version of Starship and delivered it already to the Starbase launch pad. The company said it's ready for a new launch as early as February once it receives regulatory approval. However, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration is still analyzing Starship's second flight, which ended eight minutes after launch with the booster and craft exploding. Starship did, however, successfully complete several key mission milestones last time, including a nominal super heavy engine burn and successful stage separation. At the same time, for the first time, the stage and the ship separated in hot mode, meaning the ship's engines ignited even before separation. I got my fingers crossed for a launch number three. What do you guys think? Nissan has announced a robot that entertains babies while a parent drives. The Aruyobot is pretty simple, but for interacting with children, its functionality may be just enough, at least until the babies get bored with them. The robot can play simple games, but most importantly, judging by the video, it can recognize the expression of the child's face and will not disturb him if the child falls asleep. Any parents out there? What's your take on this? Would you get this for your kid? And now, this is the part where we announce the winner of our previous giveaway. And the $50 gift card goes to Pro-Zilla Reborn. Congratulations Prozilla, please contact us via the email address located in the description to redeem your gift card. Otherwise, we're out of time folks. Subscribe to the channel, join us on Telegram, like this video, and stay tuned for more news from the world of high tech.